The Diary of Thoughts, Part 10. Internet and Mechanics of the Soul. Written by Carlos Pacheco. I used to say that the internet is the expression of the human soul. In fact, the internet is a great network of thoughts where you can find multiple manifestations of creativity. Millions and millions of thoughts are exposed to public knowledge and among them, of course, we can find a diversity of contexts that are controversial. As life in society is controversial, all thoughts expressed by images and words in the internet are nothing but the concentration of everything that some people dare to say, and others got the chance to explain while staying at the backstage of all that scenery. We can find on the internet the mirror of human souls with all the good and bad implicated in that saga that is our existence, all along with all our own values, principles, rules, contradictions, mistakes, errors, faults, doubts, beliefs, and so on. As the spirit of human beings detains the knowledge of creation, we create a so-called technology that allows us to break the frontiers of ignorance, as this is a universal library from where we all learn. This sharing means also that we are all learning with each other. Some people don't like to recognize that they're always learning with others, and by doing that they forget about their capacities, that at the same time are being used by the people with whom they share their daily lives. While sharing what they are, they are accomplishing the final purpose of the internet. The internet is nothing but simply sharing information, sharing data, sharing thoughts, sharing souls after all. The origin of the internet is completely different from other sources of technology. Contrary to the technology that used the potential of nuclear energy to invent the atomic bomb, the internet was created from a military structure for national defense, to be adapted to a greater goal, to share information and knowledge worldwide. One evening, while I was watching a movie, I listened to an expression that I loved and automatically made me think about the internet. At a certain point, they said, quote, intelligence gathering, end quote. This sentence was pronounced in a completely different context, in this case, political, but that adapted perfectly to my concept of the internet and its significance. The internet is nothing but an intelligence gathering obtained through technical means. But as in other political contexts, this gathering can be the object of manipulation of the society. In fact, we can make several comparisons between human beings and the visionary structure that originated the machine called the computer. Our brain is like a hard disk that was and is continuously formatted in a certain way, according to the new programming coming from the matrix, coming from the creation. Our brain's activity can also be compared to a processor. We react to a certain amount of information that is downloaded, like learning lots of things in school and finally becoming dependent of conditional behaviors that were created by an external source of data. The same way, by the fact that we share our knowledge with others, we are doing nothing but uploading our data to public knowledge. The internet as any other vehicle of information is basically in superiority compared to other similar forms of communication, as it represents a whole manifestation of a multiple and global source of thoughts. These thoughts can be positive or negative. The internet and use of computers also created a certain misunderstanding about the word intelligence. Some people are convinced that by the fact of having a computer at home, they become automatically more intelligent. Meanwhile, they use the computer just to play mere games or visit some websites that are not the most constructive for their intelligence. Of course, there is a certain degree of development originated by the use of computers. First of all, we have to integrate ourselves into the form or structure of reasoning that lies inside the computer. Gradually, we assimilate the logic of the operating systems and all the software related to the machine. We even begin to understand the behavior of the machine. It means that there is a particular relationship between us and the machine. In fact, the language of the machine was originated by the spirit of human beings, though we are relating ourselves with other people under this technical structure to present our thoughts and their organization to others. While reading a newspaper, some people concentrate their reading on the tragic news, and as a counterbalance, others search for articles containing constructive facts and events. Instead of looking for drama or catastrophe, some people are seeking to read news about new inventions or some contributions to society, for instance, how many schools or hospitals were inaugurated, how many new orphanages were also put in place, and so on. This difference of behavior means that it all depends on each one of us to identify what is useful to learn and know, or not. Don't forget that there is also the non-useful knowledge. 
This last one just creates doubts and inner conflicts expressed by unnecessary stress and illogical behaviors. Mechanics doesn't forcibly involve material resources. It can be strictly spiritual. There is a mechanical element directly or indirectly implied on everything that we do, even in our reasoning. Even our thoughts have their mechanics. There is material mechanics as we find cellular or molecular structures that obey to an intrinsic mechanical structural dependency. We can say that the internet represents the mechanics of soul, as our souls also have their mechanics and its structure. Mechanics has a common element along with repetition, as this last one is also a constant in life. We repeat gestures and behaviors. Thoughts and life herself is nothing but the repetition of an eternal cycle, season after season. Life obeys to a repeated cycle originated by a particular mysterious foundation that causes those cycles. A cycle is nothing but a repetition. When we find happiness we want this state of spirit to become repeated forever and just stay like that, nothing more. Programming is an intellectual activity but is expressed by a mechanical act of writing the logical formula into put machines, namely computers, processing those thoughts. Programming is nothing but the association of thoughts coming out of a logical process. That logical process is mechanical and materially represented by a processor. As computers were made in the image of our spiritual structure of thoughts and personal intelligence, a processor does the same thing as the brain regarding treating information. The only advantage is the speed of interpretation of the quantitative data and its related action that a processor detains while human beings are limited in that area. Some people manage to perform mathematical calculations much faster than a computer simply by processing those numbers in their brains. People who can perform several tasks at the same time, or concentrate on several subjects without overcoming their capacities and limits. Ultimately, that logical process is nothing but the result of a minimal particle of the logic implied in creation, as after all it was creation that gave us that gift called intelligence. Here we are going again towards a common subject that is present in every single subject that I might refer to in this document, and that is called creation, the creation. The internet and computer technology brought us lots of possibilities regarding administrating our lives to the point of creating three-dimensional worlds, even virtual words. We can say that the world economy is nowadays dependent on the global computer structure of networks and communication systems. The whole stock market activity and all the services around it are dependent on computers. If they collapse, the world economy will have serious problems to find solutions to reorganize themselves. The economical situation that we are living is some way related to the influence that technology had on society, namely computers and the internet. Virtual economic structures were created to find solutions that didn't match the economical reality of society. Everything that is virtual supplanted the real and concrete economy generated by natural resources and its related production and industry. Based on a virtual economic structure, governments invested on real estate mega-projects, like Dubai, Qatar and lots of other non-realistic investments. The problem is that now, there is no real money to pay all those investments since everything was based on virtual numbers to achieve concrete projects. There is a direct conflict between what is real and what is virtual which means that virtuality has to be definitely controlled as it is unlimited, mostly not real. Virtual images of a non-existing society were generated to disguise the real existing problems and manipulating our souls under the basis of creating new values, concepts and standards in society. The manipulation of virtual economy created wrong interpretations by the ones who are using the necessary tools to put that same economy in motion. The new generation and its majority think that a simple credit card solves every difficulty in life, forgetting their individual and social obligations towards society, mostly towards themselves as without knowing, they achieve a state of dependency on virtual financial means, creating a never-ending situation of economic self-debt. The new generations are brainwashed by virtual images which generates reactions and attitudes. Some virtual devices were utterly abolished by the effects they created in some people's minds, including physical consequences such as heart attacks and emotional stress. People are living under a constant stress caused by this virtual world that surrounds us. War is presented to the new generations as a mere game as all other games that are based on the concept of violence, like cops and robbers or mythological creatures that are threatening the world, and so on. Youth doesn't have the real notion about the significance of the war and everything that is connected to it. For them, 
it is like watching a movie as it represents something that happened a long time ago and even if it's happening now, as the war in Iraq, it immediately becomes a subject of a virtual game or other related nonsense. The consequences of those virtual realities on the evolution of society are vastly negative as they create a false foundation to the human spirit and its formation. The relationship between people, in general, attained a different state while using the internet as a platform to exchange thoughts. New relationships are made under an image that most of the time don't match the personality of the person contacted. A virtual relation is very different from a personal one. Shaking hands and looking straight in the eyes of the other person is still the best way to relate with others, even with its circumstantial and eventual problems. The dependency on email for instance, and websites related to the exchange of personal information created a new culture that has to be measured regarding at what point it can interfere with social life and society. Today, people don't want to think too much and by doing so, they are playing the game of those who manipulate their lives through technological means. Of course, it's easier to stay in front of a computer and dive into a virtual illusion, but that illusion can have extreme consequences in our social life. Relationships between thousands of families are ruined due to that fact. Illusions and dreams are part of human life. They are necessary to create, improve and evolve. If not, they can become malefic. As in numerous situations, profit is in direct conflict with evolution. The profit obtained by manipulating the internet can be extended to all the notions about power that are linked to that fact. The same principle can be applied to science that detains the power of knowledge as merchandise, or a medicine that can only be shared according to the interest of science and economy. Even at the center of academic sciences there were all the interests from the ones who were supposed to promote and protect the role of science in the first place, but some didn't. Jealousy and greed for fame and profit were and are part of that dimension of scientists as in any other domain. We can compare it to the reigning intrigues within the Roman Empire and later on at the cradle of the Vatican, not to speak of the honorable British Kingdom and everything else that can imply false notions about power and supremacy. Science always controlled evolution to the point of ignoring the solutions that are at their disposal and could have been brought to society, if science and its knowledge were totally revealed. By matter of profit and gain the solutions are only practiced according to certain contexts that are presented in society, but still considering in the first place their advantages, as they detain evolution in their hands. One example of the existing contradiction between the purpose of technology and its actual practice is the economical solutions that could be found by its application. If every one of us discounted one single cent in each phone call to minimize, or even stop world famine and disease, the whole third world would reach its end. Considering the billions even trillions of communications that are occurring at this exact moment, we can imagine the continuous and enormous economy that could be generated. A world fund could be created and may be managed by the United Nations or another legal and official institution named for that purpose, but as this is not convenient for the actual economic structure of society, that world fund is not an important issue in political or economical terms. There are intelligent people studying organization and methods, also human resources, but these two different areas of knowledge don't lead them to have the minimal perception about the human component. This last one is at the origin of all failures while attempting to impose their logic systems to different cultures that are apparently illogical, but that will always prevail due to their natural born ways to live and survive. When the pretended logic tries to surmount the apparent logic of human behavior, ignoring their cultures, something will be very negative as a final result is there is an invisible balance that is not translated by the logic that man created. Those mega brains that we have, ruling our society by scientific and technological, even brainwashing ways, didn't understand the importance of this fundamental key, and try to impose their logic and culture. This method of trying to impose their ideas and megalomanias can last for some period of our existence, but it will always fail as its base and objective are corrupted in the first place, and humanity will always find herself at a starting point. Maybe this translates the repetition of life and all that is related to it, as history repeats. Maybe this proves that the evolution of human beings depends on their comprehension or incomprehension about their existence. Maybe that comprehension will be the only way to find solutions for humanity instead of using science and technology to manipulate society. And please don't tell me that it was always like that, or there's nothing to do about it. That affirmation is an attempt against our intelligence and dignity.
It's certain that creation put us all here in this dimension to learn and evolve. As our souls belong to the creation, we all belong to the same origin and are linked in a certain way in spiritual terms by logic and energy. We are connected by a particular mechanic of the soul represented through the internet, as if it would become a new and universal language. I also use computers a significant part of my time, as I made several websites, and my professional background is also related to database programming. I consider the internet as one of the largest contributions of technology to society, but I do believe that it would be too sad to see all of us spending most of our time in front of a computer, instead around a nice table along with our families. It's up to each one of us to find the right utilization of this technology, without forgetting our fundamental values and traditions. The Diary of Thoughts End of Part 10 Written by Carlos Pacheco